Hey everybody out there, my name is Dragnix, and this is Overwatch Monday. Yes, not Overwatch Friday, mostly because the Shadow Warrior 2 review, I stayed up all night to make the embargo on. I did have some problems with Adobe, I fixed those problems mostly to do with my hard drive, but I was in no shape to actually make an Overwatch Friday video, so I apologize for that. I'm making up for it with an Overwatch Monday video. But before I begin this video, I want to take care of the giveaway from the last Overwatch Friday video. And the winner of that Overwatch Friday is on the screen right about now. I thank everybody for entering. The person who did win, contact me if you don't have me on Steam yet. You can find me in the description below. And just add me and I will get you the game as soon as I can. As for the giveaway for this week, I'm going to go with a copy of Slain Back From Hell. Now you may remember that I did a critical eye on Slain a while ago, and I had a negative experience with it. I had some problems with the way it was designed, in particular with the level design. Well, they have fixed a bunch of the issues in question, and while I don't have the sort of time to do a secondary review, aka a follow-up review, I do think they have improved the game a little bit. So, how do you enter? Well, it's a little bit different this time. First, you'll have to follow me on Twitter. Yes, I do have a Twitter handle that I do keep active, at least I try to keep active, and I do more than just the videos. I retweet people who have done videos, you know, articles by Tech Raptors, so on and so forth. So I ask that you follow me there and answer the question that I'm going to pose to you right now. The question I have for you today is, what game are you still playing regularly even several months after the launch? In my case, it's Overwatch, and I'm going to talk a little bit about Overwatch and its staying power. Yes, I have done a video on that before, but it's been a couple of months since it's released now, and I do see concerns from my side. Okay, I see the concerns. I have concerns about whether or not the game can keep it up, especially with the October, November, and December months where bigger games such as Call of Duty, Battlefield are coming out. So again, respond to me on Twitter and you'll be entered for the giveaway for Slain Back From Hell and then I'll give it away next week or it may be Friday. I haven't decided if I'm going to make this Overwatch Monday or keep the Overwatch Friday and do two Overwatch videos this week. Now, before I get into the actual topic of the video, there's one other thing I wanted to take care of and that is a challenge from someone regarding the presidential election. The fact is, is that somebody really, 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 really wants to know who I am going to vote for, which I'm not exactly sure why. And the fact of the matter is, is that this is a gaming channel. This is me. But OK, fine. You want to know who I'm voting for? Here it is. I don't like either of the major candidates, and that's it. Hillary is not ready to lead this country, in my opinion. The fact of the matter is, is that she handled the WikiLeaks situation and the email situation poorly, and I just don't trust her in charge. Even if she was following protocol and was within the rules, which I'm pretty sure that she was not based on the leaks, common sense common sense says okay this is confidential information this is classified information that could hurt the country so where in your common sense did it make sense to you know email that out to your own private email address that alone should you know stop people and say wait a minute something's wrong here as to trump i do think he's a more honest candidate on the other hand some of the stuff that he says yeah i understand why a lot of people have problems with him Look, the fact is, is that even if he is president, I am concerned that he will be able to get anything done. Even within his own party, I don't see the Senate and the House having real backing of him at this point, and so I see it being the status quo. Now, if a gun to my head I had to vote for one of the two candidates, I would probably vote for Trump because at least it's the status quo, and I th think that Hillary will make the country a lot worse. With that said, I don't like either candidate. Personally, I am going to think about voting third party only for the sake of this. I don't think the third party is going to win. However, I do think that if it does get enough percentage of the votes overall, 
it does make it so that they can actually be in debates next year and things like that. And I p think people should really consider that as an option because, again, I think the two-party system has shown that we do have a lot of issues here in terms of this sort of black and white scenario. There is no in-between. There is no third option. And I think the third option is really necessary in this case, especially when the first two options are, let's just say, bad. All right, politics out of the way. I apologize. I don't like going into those kind of things on the channel because, well, this is a gaming channel. So, Overwatch. The thing is, is that I'm still playing Overwatch. I don't want to say religiously, but, you know, an hour or two a night. This is my relaxing game. This is my game that I use to decompress. And the fact of the matter is, is that I'm still enjoying it. It has replaced TF2 as my game of choice in terms of that sort of, okay, I don't have anything that I want to specifically do. I want to sort of shut my mind off in terms of analysis, in terms of looking at every detail of gameplay, and I just want to have fun. And Overwatch is that, mostly. I say mostly because I have been noticing a trend over the last two months, and in particular in the last three weeks. The amount of people leaving matches, the amount of people doing ridiculous things, the amount of people trying to troll other people has exponentially grown over the last month in Overwatch. Just from me playing in quick play, seeing people go two Bastion, two Widowmaker, one Symmetra on offense. Look, I like the fact that you can play gimmick matches. I like the fact that you can, you know, experiment with things like that. But the thing is, is that one of the big problems I have is that when a person joins a game like that, where it's two Bastion, two Widowmaker, and one Symmetra on offense, and they want to leave, they say, okay, I don't really want to play this, they get punished for it. Because again, there's the lever penalty. Even if you haven't joined the game yet and haven't gotten involved in terms of the gameplay, if you end up joining in the middle of the match, you're counted as a lever, and thus you can get a penalty over time. And eventually, you will probably get that penalty because right now, you may join that game, you know, a second time around because you, you know, okay, disconnect. Okay, I'm going to join again. Wait, I'm back in the same game. For some reason, they don't have the logic in there to say, okay, this person just left that server. Maybe we should not have him rejoin that server right away. I mean, I'm getting to the point where I'm leaving matches before I even start because I just don't want to deal with it. I don't want to put 10 minutes into a match where I'm playing the one healer where there's no tank and getting killed over and over and over and over again. Look, you may say I'm no fun, but that's not the way I want to play. And that's where I think Overwatch is starting to struggle. Now, you may be saying to yourself, Dragnix, why don't you just play competitive all the time then? Well, that's the opposite side of the problem. The fact is, within the competitive community, if you don't play certain classes, if you don't, if you try to choose a Hanzo, for example, or if you try to choose Symmetra in a situation where they may not be the most perfect fit, you're going to be yelled at. You can't experiment at all. You can't try to change things up because you will get yelled at from your other teammates. And for good reason. Again, part of the competitive advantage that you have in terms of these matches is coming together as a team. If you're all on the same page, you are probably going to succeed. If you're not, you're probably going to fail. So if you go outside of what everyone else on your team is doing, yeah, that's going to be a problem. Are you having fun? Yes. Are you helping your team win? That's a matter of debate in some cases. Right now, this all has to do with Overwatch's inflexibility, which is sort of hilarious considering the amount of heroes and the amount of game types they've had in the Brawl mode. The fact is, is that if I want to play a game on a specific map, I can't. Well, okay, I can play a private game and host a game, but if I want to play with public people or people that I don't know, well, guess what? I can't. And that has to do with the inflexibility of their server browser, well, the lack of a server browser, to be honest. That's what a game like TF2 has over Overwatch right now. If I want to play on a specific map right now, I can in TF2. I really can't in Overwatch. Sure, I can host my own game, 
But the thing is, is that I can't play with public people. I have to invite people, and that can get messy, especially if all my friends aren't online, and I don't have the number of friends online at this point to play a game. And even if they are online, will they want to play at this point? The thing is, is that I do think Overwatch needs this rather quickly because, again, I'm seeing the signs of degradation in terms of people getting bored with the maps, getting bored with the standard play that some people are really still enjoying, but not the majority of people, or at least the majority of people that I've been running into lately. Part of this is the lack of content updates coming from Blizzard. Now, I will say that when they've pushed content out, the content has been good. Anna, even though I had some issues with her at first, I really think she's a well-designed hero overall. The fact is, is that I actually have the most hours played in Anna right now more than any other character. Now, part of that has to do with a challenge regarding the play of the game, and I can't get an Anna play of the game for the life of me, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But the fact is, is that, okay, that hero did reinvigorate things. Even though the Lucio meta had been there for a long time, people started playing Anna. They started experimenting with her. And I see a lot of Annas in gameplay now. I still see a lot of Lucios. I still see a lot of Mercies. But the fact is, Anna did help the game. A majority of this problem, in my opinion, has to do with the maps. Now, characters, there is a wide variety of characters at this point, And even though... There are certain characters that do well on certain maps, like Roadhog on Well, for example. There's enough variety within the characters to change up your strategies within those maps. But the maps themselves, I think, are the problem. We've got about seven to eight maps in rotation right now. Yes, we have, like, okay, there's three maps within the group of Well, Lighthouse, so on and so forth. But the thing is, is that that's all one set of maps. You can't switch from, like, Lighthouse to the control center in uh, Yijang Tower. And the thing is, once you play a map over and over again and you don't have control over which map you're playing on, that starts to get old. There was one day recently where I played nothing but Elios over and over and over again. Even when I got into a game on the new German map, all of a sudden it re-instanced and I'm in Elios again. And it got boring. I wanted to change out of that, but I couldn't. And thus I stopped playing. This concerns me because when I look at what the developer is talking about coming up in terms of the new maps, okay, new maps, fine. You have one right around the corner, one that's in, you know, internal testing phases. It seems like the production of the maps are, I don't want to say low priority, but medium priority when it's one of your biggest problems right now other than the server browser. The fact is, if you had those maps there, I think you would get more variety and people wouldn't be going to those gimmicks, going to those issues where it's just like, okay, I'm so bored with the regular gameplay, but I still love the base game, that I'm going to try something completely out there, completely different, or just annoy the crap out of your teammates. Like a May, for example, who keeps on blocking off you being able to get to the point. It's people like that where it's just like, okay, I'm hitting the report button at this point, but I don't want to have to deal with that on a regular basis, and I think the structure of... I will give Blizzard credit on one thing though, and that has to do with the balance of their game. When it comes to the amount of changes they've had in terms of people complaining about, okay, Genji being overpowered, they do take the time to make sure that yes, this is a problem, but on the other hand, they do get a release out in a relatively quick fashion, about a month. Yes, that may seem slow in terms of other games like maybe TF2 when it was in its hay period, but I think that helps in terms of, okay, there is a meta established, we can play during that meta, okay, you know, Genji is a huge problem, we'll have to deal with that. But it gives the time to actually make sure that, hey, wait a minute, is Genji a real problem right now? Or is it the fact that, you know, people are just gravitating towards Genji just because at this point, maybe due to some other weaknesses of other heroes like Mei. Now, are they perfect? Not at all. I think D.Va in particular right now needs to be looked at because I think she's serving a purpose that her original design wasn't intended to do. Right now she's able to stop ultimates like a good amount of ultimates, Soldier 76, Pharah. She's able to deal with it with her defense matrix and the amount of time that the defense matrix can be up at this point is huge. Even with Reinhardt's shield, it will be damaged and destroyed over a period of time. But the defense matrix seems to stay up and actually eat the entire 
ultimate up, and I don't think that's what their intention was. Yes, the original D.Va design had that problem too, but it was only for a couple of seconds. I've seen D.Va defense matrixes be able to stay up for a good 10, 12 seconds being held down at that point. That just does not seem like a good idea from a offense defense type of mentality you're able to stop the match at that point in terms of the sort of flow from okay we're pushing forward now we're going to make a huge push now we got to back off she just sort of delays things over and over again and i don't think that's good in terms of the game's flow especially from a competitive watchable standpoint one side note that i want to make here and that has to do with anna anna and the ability for her to get play of the game is non-existent at this point. In terms of her plays of the game, I've only seen one that was legitimate in terms of, and it wasn't some kind of gimmick. It wasn't everybody going Anna on the entire other team and your team. There was only one legitimate one, and that was one game where everyone else sort of didn't do that much, and so she was able to sort of get that play of the game. I think that has to do with one huge thing that could be changed in order to help her out on that, and that has to do with her sleep dart. Yes, she does get a benefit towards the play of the game, aka that fire, when she hits somebody with a sleep dart, but it doesn't take into account the situation. For example, if she sleep darts an ultimate ability. That is a huge change of pace in terms of the game. If she's able to stop a D.Va or a Roadhog in the middle of their ultimate, okay, maybe not D.Va, but Roadhog in particular, that seems like to be a huge swing in terms of, okay, I stopped them from being able to move forward. I should get a huge boost in terms of that. But for some reason, it only gives you a slight boost in terms of flame. I do think that could be adjusted so that it's a huge output and combined with some healing and combined with maybe a kill or two that yes it is worthy of a play of the game because it was a huge point in the match back to the regular gameplay though in terms of what is coming up on the plate infinite warfare battlefield one do i think overwatch will die during those periods no but with the lack of content updates and the lack of the ability to customize your game I can see a good amount of people going over to those games for that period of time and maybe coming back hoping that something else has changed during that time. The thing is is that I do still want Overwatch to be a huge success because of the fact that I enjoy the game a lot. I think it adds a lot of strategy, you can play around with a lot of things, and even now I'm finding things on maps that I can use in terms of, okay, I can use this corner or I can trap myself in this corner in case things get, you know, a little bit hairy but that only is going to stay for a period of time. Sooner or later, they're going to need something big in terms of a server browser, in terms of a couple map update in order to keep things going. Or community updates. Give your tools to the people who are out there and let them play around with it. Because trust me, there are some really good map makers out there. If you need any example of that go and take a look at tf2 because even tf2 is realizing that their latest updates have maps that were created by the community because they have the design they say okay these are the strengths of the game let me design it they are being used in competitive matches because they are balanced now is this a retread of an older video that i did in terms of overwatch's staying power to a certain extent, yes it is, but I wanted to come back to this topic because this is a couple of months after the game's launch. In terms of an FPS, that can mean a lot in terms of, okay, how much of your percent of your player base has stayed? I've seen a good amount of players still, you know, actively involved. I don't see the same players over and over again, at least on a regular basis. Do I see a couple? Yeah, I do. But the fact of the matter is, I still think a lot of people are playing the game. And although we don't have things like Steam charts to see, okay, how many people are playing in Blizzard's games right now, there are people who are still playing and religiously playing in terms of 200, 300, 400, 500, 600 hours. So I do want to see the game succeed. And in order for it to be able to be successful and be something like a Heroes of the Storm, like Hearthstone for Blizzard, they're going to have to up their content in terms of release while keeping the quality. And maybe they need to get the community involved more in terms of the PTR, in terms of, okay, this map has gone through some of the internal testing, maybe we'll release it a little bit sooner because there'll be more eyes on it in terms of the PTR. 
Coming next on the channel is a more lighthearted video regarding Shadow Warrior 2. Is it critical? To a certain extent, I would say there are critical elements to it, but it's more of a relaxing video, more of taking the footage that I got and using it in a different way. Definitely more lighthearted, and honestly, I am a little bit concerned that you know people are going to have a ne negative reaction to it. This is a critical channel. This is a very serious channel. So for me to come out with something more humorous, more you know out there, it is a little bit of a risk. But you know, I do think that I've sort of earned the respect of okay, he definitely has the analysis. This definitely will be a different video. So maybe let him try and see what happens with it. And maybe you know it hits with people. Maybe it doesn't. But hey. That's what I felt like doing for right now. I'm also going to try to get another review done, whether it be a indie game, whether it be, you know, a bigger game that has come out recently. I'm not sure yet. You can give me some recommendations in the comments below. I do still want to go back to Deus Ex Human Revolution, not Human Revolution, Mankind Divided, but... I don't know if that's a good one fit for this week. And the fact is, I am dealing with that sort of job offer that I have to consider. I'm also considering just doing the Patreon video. After the sort of back and forth with this job offer thing, I said, okay, this would not be fair to viewers if I did the Patreon thing right now. But it's sort of up in the air still. So a little bit of an update on that one. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and expect more content soon.